In this video, we're going to build our shoe panels atop a base shell that I have already created for you. I built this particular shell from a last that was provided to me from a major footwear company. To start, we're going to paint our design atop this base shell. Then build our geometry, that is the saddle, the foxing, and so forth, directly atop the shell using the painted image as our guide. But before we can paint our design on the shell, we have to step back a minute and create something for the shell called a UV map. Let me explain. Whenever we use images on an object, the two-dimensional image has to reference some sort of coordinate system to know which parts of the image goes on which polygons of the model. A UV map is simply a version of the model or group of polygons that is flattened, much like an animal pelt. But like an animal pelt, it is not simply flattened, but it is unwrapped. Okay, so let's go ahead and UV map our shell. So go ahead and load up the shell from the assets directory. Um, and for this lesson, it would be in the Moto subdirectory and it's called shell underscore lesson three underscore start. Okay, now the first thing you'll probably notice is that the collar on this shell here is a much wider and more open than the collar on the last that uh, was we created or the last that was provided to us by the shoe company. And the reason we do this is because we want to give the, our shell a little more realistic look to what an actual shoe would look like if you just pulled it out of the box. Um, other than that, that's the only real modification we make. We call this relaxing the, uh, the shell. So this is a, a relaxed shell and uh, this is what we'll work with to build our shoe. First thing I want to do is go ahead and open up this toolbox here, which is the uh, UV mapping tools right there. And I'm going to open up a viewport. Now, uh, note that I am in the Moto switcher tab right here, as opposed to the model, which gives us this extra shelf up here. And I can add additional uh, viewports here to this, uh, to this main viewport. So I'm going to go ahead and click here to add the UV viewport. And you can see that the UV coordinate viewport is simply two dimensional and it's uh, giving us a uh, just a grid pattern right there, all right? All right, so the first thing we should do here is go ahead and create a UV map since there is no UV maps attached to this shoe. We'll go ahead and click here and go to new and we'll just leave it called texture, that's fine. So now we have a UV map attached to the shoe, but there's nothing on it. There's no geometry attached to this UV map. So what we need to do is uh, we need to do a projection of this geometry onto the UV map uh, coordinate system here. So uh, just by default, I'm just gonna click the UV projection tool and look what it does. It creates by default a projection on a vertical axis. And let me call up the properties panel, oops. Let's go ahead and, there we go. Got the properties panel right there. And I'll just go ahead and pin this so we can see. So it's the UV map is the texture. It's planar mapping on the Y axis and the Y axis in Moto is the vertical axis. And what it's doing is it's just kind of looking, looking at our model from the top down. And this is how it will project an image. Now the problem with this is that we have a lot of overlap here as you can see in this red or orange area that's giving us overlap. So this is really not ideal for what we need uh, to apply a fabric with a pattern uh, on it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what happens if we try to apply a texture to a UV map that has overlaps. So I'll go to here, I'll go to UV textures, I'll double click on that, and you can see right away that we have some really strange and weird stretching going on here. Um, and in this little area here where we're getting some overlap, let me go to polygons here, right here, you can see that we have a repeat there. There's B3 and there's B3 down there. And it's actually kind of uh, flipping this map around on this side and here you see some weird strange stretching. So it's not a good way to uh, apply texture to a map that has uh, overlaps in it. So what we need to do is cut this as if it were a piece of fabric. 
um, like a pelt and uh, just flatten it uh, flatten it that way so the way we do that is we have to select edges as if we were going to cut this with a scissors so what I'm going to do is just highlight my uh, edge selection here double click on that but I'm also going to select the open edges here and the reason I do this is because I've had better luck with UV unwrapping when I actually select the open edges rather than let Moto uh, find them itself. Okay, so here we are, and that's all I need to do. Now let's go to the Unwrap tool. Okay, I'm going to select Unwrap, and I'm going to click in this viewport here. Um, I might have to click more than once. There's once, twice, and three times, and there it is. Now let's call up the Properties panel here, and we can see that with this tool still active, we can see that it is uh, the method of unwrapping is called conformal. Um, and it's using the selected edges and it's got 100 iterations. So these are the really the only three things you really need to consider. Um, now I can change the iterations. That's what's going to give me the most result. And you can see as I, as I click and drag these little arrows, it changes the iteration. I can also just click in the viewport here and drag my mouse. That also changes the iterations. And as you can see, that's getting a lot closer to what I want. However, I'm going to change this to angle based um, and I'm going to increase the iterations more and I'm going to just set it right about uh, let's go to about 320 right about there and the reason I'm changing to an angle based method is that I'm looking at the two back edges there and it's going to give me a closer relationship between those two edges. In other words, they'll be sized more closely together. Now I'll just hit escape a couple of times to drop the selection. Now I'm going to go over to my polygons and I really don't need to select anything uh, because uh, everything is selected if nothing is selected. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit E to rotate. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to hit the control button. Oops, let's, let's, set, let's do that again. E, grab that control. There we go. And that will, will snap to 15 degree increments right there. And I think that's what I want because I want to turn this sideways. Uh, this is, this is the angle that I prefer right about there I'll set it somewhere in the middle but I'm gonna go over here to where it says fit I'm gonna click on fit entire UVs keep proportion click OK there we go next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these edges here and I'm going to click on this guy right here the align there and I'm gonna do the same with this one here lasso select that click align and there we go all right so I'm pretty happy with that now let's see what it looks like as a UV map click on here I'm going to uh, go to UV maps first let's turn on enable and now I'll go to UV maps click on this guy right here close this and there we are look at that and what you want in a UV map is you want a pattern that has pretty consistent sizes in there like for example these squares they're pretty consistent and the lines are really straight and so any pattern that you put on here is going to line up really well i think so i think we're good with this and i think that's all we need to do for the uv mapping on our shell now don't forget to save your work